Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Tuesday, March 7th edition of VR News. Start with the game Super Hot VR. Now, this was a game that brought a few new things to the table in terms of FPS, wave-based games. Art style was pretty unique. It also had a time-slash-combat mechanic that used time. So basically, when you moved, so did the enemies, so did the world around you. The faster you move, the faster they move. The less, the less they move. So puzzle-based in that you would be thrown into different scenarios with the enemies coming at you in waves and having a certain layout in terms of geography, a certain amount of objects at your disposal, and you would have to find a way to dispatch the enemies. Well, they've got a free update to the program. It's an Oculus Rift and HTC Vive game. Rather than being DLC that adds levels, it basically gives you new modes. So you get what's called the headshot only mode, where you guessed it, only headshots count, which would be really tough. A don't shoot mode, even one bullet is going to disqualify you and make you reset. A don't die mode, which as you guessed, any death, 10 seconds before the end of the game, who cares, reset. So... All right, Arizona Sunshine, next game with an update. So what they've done is they've added a mission that sends you back into the mine. Now, if you have not played Arizona Sunshine, and this is spoiler free if you plan on playing it, the mines is basically a claustrophobic area with very little lighting and a metric crap ton of zombies milling around looking for you to cannibalize. So it's basically, yeah, 20 to 30 minutes of terror. Well, this mission sends you back down there for, I'm guessing, more of the same. So that's Arizona Sunshine. Fantastic example of the genre. Now, this next update has to do with Sansar, which is the social VR experience. I've talked about it many times on the channel here but I've never really gotten it. And I don't mean not gotten it in the sense that I don't play or enjoy social VR. I mean, I literally never got it. Today's video and their update on it actually freaking made sense to me. I think I know what's happening now. And what it is, is it's a world that they have released into VR to let content creators loose on whatever their imaginations can come up with in terms of levels, in terms of worlds, events, experiences. You as the person experiencing Sansar, it's almost like a buffet MMO for experiences. So instead of a game, it's you in all kinds of different environments. I mean, think about it. There was, if you look at the video, there's ancient Egypt. There's a medieval looking level. To have the ability to explore like that, that is specifically what virtual reality can offer you and not necessarily a social VR experience undertaking. It's actually something that has me interested now with this last update and the video actually making sense, I may actually visit it. And that's saying a lot because I am definitely not a social VR guy. Also, just a reminder, guys, the PlayStation 4 4.50 and VR 2.40 updates released today. So tracking improvements among a multiple of things all released today for PlayStation 4. All right, this next story, it's a university program for a simulation and visualization bachelor's degree. So essentially a four-year program that they have compressed and crunched into what they're calling 20 insanely intensive months. Listen to the course load, guys. So you get C-sharp programming, C++, Unity Engine, Unreal Engine, visualization and modeling, artificial intelligence, applied human computer interaction, linear algebra, physics, computer networks, Historical Archetypes and Mythology, English Composition. What a freaking range of topics. So you, you're going to come out of that with 
just a wide range of topics covered. Just to give you a taste of what some of the alumni are able to do when they graduate from this program, they've included a video for a game called Dimension Hunter. Now you gotta see this thing because it would not look out of place, for example, being on Steam VR. And I don't mean that in the sarcastic sense that there's a lot of crap up there. I mean it in the sense that it would hold its own in the upper good half of good VR experiences on Steam VR. It looks decent. If the gameplay is in any way close to the visuals, yeah, it's probably not going to be a bad thing. Now, cost-wise, they didn't really provide details, but as the uh, father of a 21-year-old uh, university student, I'm going to tell you it's probably not cheap. That would be my guess. All right, next story. Haven't had one of these in a while, guys. A real pissoir, a schlock-worthy pissoir. And I'll explain in a second. So the uh, asshats behind this are called Six Cents. If that sounds familiar, it's probably because you're aware of a Kickstarter that funded half a decade ago, October 12th, 2013, these guys raised $600,000 US from 2,383 backers that put up their own money to get a Six Sense controller. Now look, you can come up with all kinds of excuses, right? And we could have an entire day streaming show dedicated to buyer beware, caveat emptor. Absolutely, there's an element of that, right? You do, there's an inherent risk when you back something in Kickstarter. And my rule, and I mentioned this on my last video dealing with Kickstarter, the more technically complex or the more technical the promise, the more likely it's a scam or something they're just never going to be able to have work or deliver on. And I think this falls under that category. What bothers me the most is not the fact that people don't have a product four years later. Don't get me wrong, that bugs me. What bugs me most is despite their claims to the contrary, these guys are getting new investors on board. They've not missed a trade show in years. They show up. These things are not cheap to set up, and yet not a single person has seen even a dime of a refund. That's the part that ticks me off. Do you owe them a product? Look, you could argue that they're taking a risk. And if this was a company that went out of business or took the Neil Stevenson approach where he was, look, it's not going to work as we envisioned it. We screwed up and we're going to do our best to refund. And that's what they did. And they walked away. These guys aren't walking away. There's no bankruptcy here. These are people that took 2,083 fellow human beings money and have provided nothing in return other than false promises you read the updates they're pathetic the excuses that these guys come up with yet new revised products seem to miraculously appear at trade shows hopefully an investor steps forward and says look if we want to take the next step with you guys you have to make this right. And if it's 40, 50 cents to the dollar, pay them back. Pay them back. That's all I'm going to say on that, guys. Let's move on to a lighter topic. But I would be interested in your thoughts. What are your thoughts on that? How much is it their problem versus the company that we're talking about? I'd love to hear. All right, next story. A little lighter. This is Lowe's the Hardware Guys, kind of like the uh, the Home Depot competitor. Uh, we've got this chain as well here in Canada. They've got a really neat virtual reality tutorial program in a few stores that they're trialing. And it's for customers that want to install bathroom tiles. So these customers go through a bathroom tile installation tutorial in VR. 
hands-on where they're actually doing it. And the cool thing about this program is, according to Lowe's, the people who have gone through it, 36% better recall of how to complete the tiling project when compared with people who just watched a YouTube video or read a set of instructions. And that's something we kind of gloss over when we talk about VR and education and all the possibilities and all the potential. That's the one thing we tend to miss. The fact that anything you do education related in VR is almost always hands on. Or you are actually there as opposed to passively reading about it or watching it. You could almost argue that when it comes time for them to do their actual bathroom tiling, it'll be their second time because effectively they've done the exercise already in VR. Compared to somebody who's, again, just read it or watched a video, they've got a leg up on that. So just a really cool point, almost more important and exciting than the story itself, which it's bathroom tiles, guys, is not that exciting. But the fact that VR can deliver what it's delivering, that's freaking exciting. All right, HTC themselves almost seem surprised with the excitement of their HTC Vive tracker, that tracker that they're going to be selling, used for full body tracking. It was something they seemed equally excited about and unprepared for. It wasn't something I think they had necessarily considered themselves. But having seen it, they definitely got excited. They opened a research lab and according to Alvin Graylin, who's of course China regional president of HTC, he states that not only have they been working on their own full body tracking solution, but they're going to deploy that to developers open source, which is awesome. Of all the VR companies, you could argue, look, and I'll be the first to say there is a lot more HTC could be doing, and they are not truly open by the actual definition of it, far from, but they've made steps. And this is yet another step in that direction of openness. And it's really cool to see because other technologies, theoretically, their competitors, Sony even, could benefit from the tracking. Now, granted, it might be tougher with the camera system not having the infrared. But again, the point is others who have a similar technology could benefit. Maybe not from all of it, but portions thereof. And compared to a closed system where there's zero benefit, it's a start. All right, next story, Google Daydream. Now, what do we know about the Daydream? We know to date, they have not sold as well as they had hoped. They didn't have a great lineup of launch titles, game or experience. It was pretty dismal, okay? This is their first discount sale. Now, before you get excited at all. It's not a discount sale for the unit itself, but for what Upload VR is calling their biggest and best games. That's almost a story in and of itself, because when you evaluate the title, biggest and best games, you expect biggest and best games. Unfortunately, for those of us with other VR solutions, when we hear the titles, there's not that much excitement. The first one being Gunjack 2. While a okay game, and even the rating here by Upload VR was 6 out of 10, it wouldn't be what I would call a top 10, 20, or even 30 title. The prices dropped, though, from $13 US to $650. Then there's EA's Need for Speed No Limits VR. Can't really comment on that, but I haven't seen great things said about it. Currently costs $8, and that is down from $15. US. And then the last game, probably the best of the bunch, a game I did enjoy, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, from $10 to $5 US, so half price. Even though it's not a discount to the unit, if you've got yourself a Google Daydream, especially Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, I would pick up that game at that price. Uh, definitely worth $5 of investment. And it's a good game to play with others, like have others huddled around as well. 
All right, and the last story, guys, CNN launching their own VR news division. And I would love to say they watched my intro and got the idea when they saw me and said, wow, what a disconnect. Imagine if we actually had professionals doing news, but sadly, probably not the case. The uh, intro will be buried without such fanfare. So either way, CNN, to their credit, in all seriousness, they did have 50 plus VR stories last year. So awesome to see these guys come out with CNN VR, which will be dedicated to virtual reality. And for those like me who use it to story mine or data mine, just another resource, which will be most welcome. All right, guys, that is it for this Tuesday Night News edition. Cheers as always, and I haven't said this for a while, but uh, catch you guys on the VR flip side.